Okay, let's do this. So, I made this when I was 15 and basically contains everything I knew at the time about skinks. Now the reason I put this together was to like present it to my parents to convince them to let me have one. Um, basically I knew I wasn't going to remember everything I wanted to tell them about it so I wanted to make this to let this do the talking for me. But you know it's a lot like a care sheet actually because it includes you know uh, things it needs, what it eats, and where to get one and stuff so I guess this can kind of be like a care video but if you're looking for how to care for these definitely go check out more videos that are actual care videos rather than just this one. <laughs> where the info may not be very accurate. <laughs> but I do know a lot more now than I did when I made this, so maybe I can correct some of the things I said on here throughout this video. Anyway, let's go ahead and get started. So the first page, the title says, all about skinks and why they make amazing pets. Now I did misspell some things, so you'll see some like crossed out words with the correct spelling above it in some of these, but anyway. Let's go ahead and get reading. So it says, Blue tongue skinks are lizards that are native to Australia and Indonesia. So that's true, but they're also native to other places. <laughs> I continue by saying, The most common kinds to keep as pets are Northern Blue Tongue, the Eastern Blue Tongue, the Irinjaya Blue Tongue, and the Merake Blue Tongue. So that is also true, but there are a few more common ones to have. And so the Indonesian species would be the classic Indonesian, the Halmahera, the Irinjaya, the Key Island, the Merake, and the Tanimbar. Now the Australian species would be the Blotch, the Centralian, the Eastern, the Northern, which is what I have, and Pygmy, Shingleback, and Western. So yeah, there's a few more, and those are just the Indonesian and Australian species. There's also a bunch of different kind of skinks, like, like smaller kinds. For example, crocodile skinks, fire skinks, blue-tailed skinks, just there's a lot of skinks out there. <laughs> then I say, aside from the cost, everything about them is awesome and perfect. <laughs> well, not everything is awesome and perfect, especially if you end up with a wild-caught one, which most of the time are the Indonesian species, those are often wild-caught and taming one of those isn't so awesome. <laughs> anyway, blue tongue skinks, unlike most lizards, actually seem to enjoy human attention and don't mind being held at all. That is half true-ish. They don't actually like human attention or like being stroked and stuff. They don't enjoy it like a dog would. I mean, some of them do appear to enjoy it, but not all of them would. They don't really like being held either, they just tolerate it. Anyway, they are also quite intelligent. They are perfect beginner lizards. They are the perfect holding size. They don't run away or jump and leap around like other lizards. They're pretty much the dog version of a lizard because they are wonderful companions. They actually eat dog food and like being scratched on the head and chin. So back to the um, not really enjoying human attention. I said they like being scratched on the head and chin. Well, that can be true for some. You can take them outside, watch movies with them, and let them ride on you as you take a walk. Yeah, but only if they actually stay there often and don't fall off. They just have so much personality. It's true. <laughs> Skinks are super tame and in the wild, they'd much rather run away than fight back predators. They have a blue tongue to stick out and warn predators that he's poisonous. Of course, it's just a trick because they aren't actually poisonous. Well, yeah, they're super tame once once tamed, <laughs> or if they're captive bred and handled while they're babies a lot. They are also capable of dropping their tail when running away to distract the predator. It does eventually grow back. Yep. Skinks have powerful jaws, but their teeth are very tiny nubs, so in the rare situation that it bites, it won't be super painful, just strong and lots of pressure. Mm, I'm sure it would still be painful. And then there's the picture of the skink, and at the bottom right here, there's just a fun fact, but I don't think that fact is super accurate, so I'm not going to show it. <laughs> so the next page is basically just a continuation of the first page because it has the same title. 
This time the pictures are of a Indonesian species of skink. The one in the front was a northern and our printer at the time only seemed to have black and yellow. <laughs> Skinks over eight months old only have to be fed one to two times a week. So my skink is eight months old and he's been eating three times a week. It's better to just feed them like three times a week as like a juvenile more when they're still babies and stuff but juvenile to sub-adult you should still be feeding like three times a week but it really just depends on when your skink's hungry when he's not how much of the food he finishes determines like how much you should feed him next time stuff like that anyway you should really go down to one to two times a week after like a year or if your skink is only hungry for two feedings a week definitely i wouldn't recommend doing one times a week because one times a week that just seems way too little. Anyway, they also aren't nocturnal. Now that's a word I misspelled. <laughs> so they are a good pet to spend time with during the day. Unlike most reptiles who have completely black eyes, skinks have eyes more similar to human eyes and so you're able to tell if they are looking at you and being able to look directly at each other, you bond a lot more. I guess that can be true. <laughs> Anyway, skinks do not like each other, but yet, for some reason, they are completely nice and docile to humans. Feeding them is easy, their cage setup is super simple, their care and maintenance is easy, the only problem is that it's hard to find one that's an okay price. Suppose that's true. Spelled maintenance wrong. Alright, next page is cage plus supplies. Okay, just by looking at the picture, I can tell this is not enough stuff <laughs> compared to all the stuff I got for him. Definitely not enough. <laughs> Here I say the minimum cage size for a blue tongue skink is 36 inches long, 18 inches wide, and 12 inches high. Many won't agree with that, but it is kind of true that that is the minimum, but the minimum should really be four foot by two foot by two foot. Mine is 36 inches by 18 by 18, which at the moment is a good size for him, but he's getting bigger still and one day I may have to upgrade. So the picture is an exoterra, but what I have is a reptizoo terrarium. But yeah, this exoterras are still good. Usually big lizards would need much bigger enclosures as the minimum, but because skinks have short legs, they don't move around very much and don't need a super huge cage. So that's not true. They do move around a lot and they are really fast on their little legs and they do take advantage of all of their space. Not long ago, my skink was exploring like all over his cage, just going through every leaf and plant in there and just examining everything. He definitely uses all that space. So anyway, moving on. All a skink needs in his cage is bedding to burrow in, which can just be aspen wood shavings, which is the cheapest bedding ever. That would only be for the Australian species aspen I'm talking about, because um, for the Indonesian species you need higher humidity, and so you'd want a substrate that holds humidity well, like eco-earth and perhaps mulch, some other things. <laughs> so you can use um, aspen wood shavings for northerns, which my skink was on that previous to living with me. But I keep him on cypress mulch, which I think is cheaper than aspen. And I got a huge bag of uh, cypress mulch from Lowe's and it was only three dollars. <laughs> so then I say he needs a hide or two to sleep in, two dishes for food and water, maybe a slate rock for basking on, and a heat lamp. Super simple setup. Well it is a simple setup but yeah you would need a lot more than that. It's a good thing I was not able to get a skink at this point because I would have only gotten these things for it. <laughs> so yes it does need two hides, one on the warm side, one on the cool side. It does need two dishes for food and water, and it doesn't maybe need a slate rock, it does need a slate rock to bask on, or just some kind of surface. 
that isn't the substrate to bask on. And it does need a heat lamp, but then it also needs a heat emitter for the night or a heat pad. I have both a heat pad and a heat emitter, and then I have its basking light. But then something you should also have is UVB, which I don't have right now. I am supplementing with D3, so... But one day I probably will try UVB, but UVB isn't super necessary for them. It's just beneficial and an option, a good option, that you should definitely consider looking into. And when it comes to UVB bulbs, you definitely have to get the right one for your lizard. Some other things you should have is foliage and a brick, some kind of coarse rock they can um, climb over that will keep their nails trim and stuff, and then the foliage for them to just crawl through and have some enrichment and stuff, so definitely more than what I listed here. Alright, next page is skink diet. I have a food pyramid here and some, I guess, good options for food that I thought were good at the time. I don't know. I don't actually have any of those brands of dog food. Skinks are omnivores. In the wild, skinks will eat anything they can find that's edible. They can eat all fruits and vegetables except avocado, onion, potato, and rhubarb. Now those are correct, but there are other things they can't eat, like spinach isn't the best for them, fish isn't also so great. As protein, they can eat wet dog food as long as it's grain free and has no potato. Sweet potato is fine though. So yeah, wet dog food as long as it's grain free, but it should have other things too like no preservatives no rice or fillers or anything like that. So the ones I recommended on this were the best dog food kinds are Blue Buffalo, Merrick Wellness, and Nature's Instincts. I'm sure some of these are good as long as they're, you know, grain free, don't have any fillers or preservatives. If dog food is too expensive, they can eat other kinds of protein like eggs, cooked chicken, ground beef, worms, snails, crickets, cockroach, pinky mice. And they love snails, so I highly recommend getting canned snails, unless you can get live snails, but it's better for them to be shellless, easier for them to eat. Getting them live insects is also really good. If you're going to do the dog food thing, um, like I am, or I mean, I'm also adding some, like, homebrew kind of things like sometimes I'll give him some egg and then I have like a bunch of fruits and vegetables for him and also greens but if you have a skink that is under a year old you should give it cat food because cat food will have more protein than dog food and they need more protein as babies um, but if you're not using UVB you definitely want to give more greens along with a lot of protein which is what I do and then you also want to supplement not just with Repticalcium but also Reptivite. I give Reptivite once a month and then Repticasium with his dog food. But a lot of the dog food and stuff will already have D3 in it, but it's good to give them calcium still. If you get Repticalcium or Reptivite, you want D3 in it, especially if you're not using UVB. So anyway, yeah, the cheapest dog food would probably be the Merrick and Wellness. So researching those again, um, they don't seem to be the cheapest. <laughs> The one I got seemed to be the cheapest. I mean, there are cheaper ones, but you know, you want good quality. As a quick and easy meal, they can eat lizard food with Repticalcium powder along with fruits and veggies. I did not get this lizard food. I wouldn't recommend it. You don't want them to get impaired eating dry food like that. And they get most of their water from their food, so you want wet food. Alright, next page. We're almost done. I mean, we're getting there. This is the second to last page. So it says where to get a skink and cost. Blue tongue skinks aren't found in pet stores because the supply does not meet demand, which means they are not cheap, but still totally worth the money. Yeah, they are worth the money. <laughs> you have to buy them online from a breeder. A couple reasons why they are hard to get is because a lot of people want one and skinks are live bears, so they don't have very many young, and so breeders are usually out of stock. Yes, those things, they can actually have pretty big litters, but they're mainly just hard to breed because breeding can be very risky and dangerous for them and it's also hard to tell the gender of them and so you don't want to accidentally put two males together thinking one of them's a girl or something 
Anyway, but a few breeders I've found that seem to have them in stock year-round is Blackwater Reptiles, Snakes at Sunset, and maybe Reptile City. So I don't actually recommend getting skinks from there or other animals. It's better to get it from a reputable breeder rather than these, I guess, companies. They just haven't had the best reviews, these places. I recommend looking on Morph Market. There you can find a lot of breeders for more than just skinks, like snakes mostly, and other types of reptiles. I got my skink from Captive Bred Excellent. They are on Facebook and they have a website. Now that is a good breeder that I recommend. So then I say blue tongue skinks usually cost $200. Babies are more expensive than adults. I don't think that's true about babies being cheaper. I mean more expensive, sorry. The Indonesian species usually cost like $200, but the northerns, like Australian northerns, can cost more around $400 and $500. Mine cost $300, plus shipping, which was like $76, so $376, <laughs> so that's close to $400, and I chose like one of the cheaper ones on the breeder's website, so yeah, but this is mm, the main reason why a lot of people get Indonesians is because they are cheaper, usually. I feel like maybe the babies can be uh, more expensive than adults. Anyway, continuing. Other people recommend skink breeders on forums and others find skinks at annual reptile expos. So that is true, but there's the possibility of skinks at reptile expos being wild caught. Alright, last page. And it's more of a personal kind of thing. The title is what I would do with a skink. If I ever get a skink, I would get it the exoterra terrarium that is 36 inches long, 18 inches wide, and 12 inches high. Well, I didn't. And put it on my dresser. Then I would get all the things it needs, and maybe even a mini fridge meant for soda cans, and keep my own fruits and veggies in it for the skink and other pets. So I didn't get a mini fridge, <laughs> and honestly, if I did, it wouldn't be a fridge, it would be a freezer, because I need a freezer more so than a fridge. And I don't have enough outlets left in my room for a freezer <laughs> anyway. But if I could, I probably would still get one. I would take him on walks with Cody and I, have him sleep by me as I watch a movie, let him ride around on my shoulder, maybe one day take him to Petco with me, and love him forever. But of course never as much as Cody. <laughs> I don't think he would ride around on my shoulder, at least not at this point, and I doubt I'll take him to Petco with me one day. <laughs> Skinks can live up to 30 years and I don't mind that because he'll be one of my best friends whom I'd want to live forever. So yeah, they can live up to 30 years, but that doesn't mean they will. I hope he'll be a friend, <laughs> and I don't think I would want him to live forever because that would be a long time. <laughs> of caring for a lizard. Anyway, that is it for that. And that was also a really long video, which I hope you maybe enjoyed a little bit. I'm sure nobody's going to watch all the way through, but if you did, congrats and thank you. I hope you found that interesting and so what you can learn from this video is do your research and when you think you've done it all, do more <laughs> because yeah, I thought I knew everything I needed to know at the time of making this, but there was actually way more I needed to know. Which, you know, I'm glad I didn't just go back and look at this and get a skink now that I was allowed to. Because if I did, I would not have a very happy skink. Anyway, I'm making this video longer, sorry. Have a good day. Bye.